I'm now going to move on to how to take save your seeds from tomatoes and chilies. Um, so you're going to need jam jars if you've got jam jars and some water at hand and some kitchen towel if you need some kitchen towel um, labels some clippers um, and you'll need a pen to write on your kitchen towel as well if you're going to do the saving seed at the same time as me right so I'm going to start off with um, the little basket here of some tomatoes that I picked yesterday got all my different varieties a couple of green ones thrown in to ripen but I've grown this lovely green zebra variety this year which has been really really tasty um, I've also grown some black cherry which are just now still a bit greeny but I've got one that is just much darker here they've been a really lovely dark dark sort of cherry color they've been really good compared to the the bright red of a normal tomato they've been really tasty so I've basically picked out the tomatoes that I actually want to save my seeds from because that's the key you've got to work out which tomatoes you've absolutely loved and which ones you'd like to save the seed from so tomato seeds are very expensive to buy now I haven't really got to the bottom of that because um, if you've grown tomatoes before you might know that come the following spring where you grew your tomatoes you get volunteer plants springing up all over the shop and that's basically some tomatoes have dropped off the plant this time of year you've not noticed them they've just buried themselves in the soil they've sort of hibernated all winter and as soon as next spring happens and it warms up and you're adding some water to the soil you get lots of tomato plants appearing i've even got tomato plants appearing outside in my garden so i've obviously had some seeds in the compost of my compost heap and I've got tomato plants appearing next to my fennel. Now, obviously it's too late in the season for me to do anything with them, but I'm just trying to prove to you that it's not that difficult to grow tomatoes from seed. And to get your own seed is super easy. When you buy um, tomato seeds from a, um, you know, a supplier or a garden center, wherever, you get about six or eight seeds in a packet. Now, that's just not right because there are so many seeds in a tomato. When you slice a tomato in half, you can see, I mean, we eat all those seeds. So I don't know why they seem to be so expensive to produce and to sell on. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, if you've got a tomato in front of you, we're actually going to um, choose one, to choose a good specimen. If you're going to take your own seeds, you want a perfect tomato. You don't want one that's maybe a bit split one that's maybe got a bit of blight on its bottom, some brown spots or any rust, you want a damn good example. And the reason you want that is because you're going to save the seeds from this fruit. So it's got to be a good one to start off with. Otherwise, if you're collecting seeds from a substandard fruit, then they're not going to grow particularly well next year. Does that make sense? So um, we are actually going to get, take a, if you've got a lid in your jam jar, remove the lid and I'm going to get the tomato and we're literally going to squeeze it. I'm going to squeeze it into my jam jar. Let's hope that I get my fingers in the jam jar. There we are. Oh, <laughs> squirted all over my computer. Be careful, mine have gone everywhere. Um, so squeeze as many as you can into your jam jar, liquid and all. You can see how many seeds are coming out. Right, I've got a few in there. Let's shake those in. Right, I think I've probably got about 12 already. Just going to fold that away. Um, and then if you've got some water, some fresh water, more watering can, you want to add, so it's already in a liquid, but you want to add a little bit of water. Can you see that? So add a bit of water. Not too much, maybe a centimetre, just so that you can actually see, I'd say I've got about 25 seeds in there. But anyway, so I'm adding my water. And then all you're going to do is put the lid back on and you're going to write, do not forget to write, very important, which seeds you put in there. So I know I put my black cherry in there. So I use, if I could find it, a, I like using a China graph. It's a, um, a designer's pencil. You can buy them, you can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them from artist supply shops. Um, but I quite like these because I can just literally, if I'm in a hurry, write on my jam jar the variety. So I'm writing, that was black cherry. So I'm writing black cherry. Because it's quite remarkable how easy it is to forget things. 
I am of a certain age and I do forget quite a lot of things. So I've written on my black cherry and I'm going to leave this in the greenhouse or on my window ledge for about three to four days. Now what you'll see happening is it'll start to ferment. It'll get quite warm and it'll look a little bit moldy. Don't worry about that. In four days, you're going to remove the lid of your jam jar and you're going to strain, use a small sieve, strain the seeds out and wash them under the tap. Because tomato seeds have quite a strange membrane on the outside. And the idea is that you're actually letting some mold stick to the side of the seed so that it will then when you wash them away, the coating washes away with the mould. So you would wash them in a small sieve and then just dry them, get a piece of kitchen towel and just lay your seeds flat on the kitchen towel. Right on the kitchen towel, your seed variety, black cherry, because I can see there's a little loophole where one can forget here. A biro will work quite easily on a piece of kitchen towel or if you're really organized you could put a label on and then just leave those seeds somewhere warmish to dry they don't have to be warm it could just be on a window ledge it could be on a boiler but it doesn't need to be just somewhere so the air can dry them and then in about a week to two weeks your tomato seeds will be bone dry and you'll be able to tell because you'll pick them up and they'll feel slightly crisp like they won't be pliable they'll be tiny but you will be able to tell that they are dry when they are dry, all you need to do is fold your kitchen towel in half and in half again. And then you could just store that paper towel with the seeds in it in a, a paper envelope. And right on the envelope, again, your variety of your tomatoes. And that is your job done. Now that's sort of twist, quite, well, I can't speak, sort of quite straightforward. If you felt that was too much hassle, um, you will get 100% germination doing it that way. So what I mean is all those seeds will be true next spring. So when you come to sow them, you will probably get 100% germination from those seeds. And just to prove to you that if I grew all these seeds and they all grew into tomato plants next year, that would be way too many for me. So um, bear that in mind. Tell your friends you're doing it, swap with different varieties, but you're going to have more seeds than you will actually need. Tomato seeds you can keep from one year to the next, but no more than four years. So that's also something to bear in mind. But if you thought, gosh, Julia, that's way too much hassle. I haven't got time. I might forget. It might ferment. It might, the lid might explode. There is another way of doing it. And the other way of doing it is even simpler. And it's in exactly the same way, but I'm going to choose a tomato. I'm going to choose this one. This has been lovely. This was called Yellow Submarine, and I bought it from a company called Vital Seeds in Devon. It has been super tasty, prolific, really easy to grow. Now, I'm going to be cunning, obviously doing them out of small business, but um, I want to save the seed. So I'm going to squeeze it just on paper towel this time. I'm not going to bother the jam jar. So you can just squeeze. Try not to go everywhere, much better. So I've done a small squeeze and I already have quite a lot of seeds from that. Now I'm going to leave that, uh, I'm to tray something, use that. I'm going to leave that and I'm going to write on one part of the kitchen towel, yellow submarine. And that is going to sit just like that on a window ledge. And obviously the kitchen towel is gonna to soak up a lot of the moisture. And then in about um, probably two weeks, they will also be dry. The only difference between these is that I haven't taken off the membrane. But to be perfectly honest, if I get 80% germination from these, I'm still not worried because look how many seeds I've collected. This would be, the foolproof way of properly collecting your seeds. And this is a sort of cheats way, but it still works. And if you're short on time, and you know, I don't know if you're like me, I go into the greenhouse and I think, oh, yes, I've got to take my tomatoes out. Oh, I found a few left, yes. Oh gosh, I haven't got time to start fermenting all my different jars. Just write in a kitchen towel, squish a few seeds on, and your job is done. And then when they're dry, in exactly the same way, you fold your kitchen towel again, fold it up just like that, and pop it 
in a brown paper or white or a paper envelope, nothing plastic, always paper, because if there's a little bit of extra moisture, the paper will soak it up. Just put it in your envelope, write again on the envelope, your variety, so my yellow submarine, and that next year's seed stored. Now that's quite simple, isn't it? Did you, and everyone joined, who came and did the webinar that I did when we actually saved our own seeds? Um, so, and, and if any of you have actually, whether you actually did that and whether you've saved them. So for those of you that didn't join, I did a little webinar on how to save your own seeds from your homegrown tomatoes. And actually I talked about putting them on a kitchen towel and storing them. So, and I've kept them in my, in my tin, they've been completely dry. And it did occur to me that I probably should explain how you actually get them off the kitchen towel because they were literally stuck. So what you would do, I'll just quickly show you and then I'll move on so everyone else can, can know back to my stuff. A little thing of water here. Um, and all you do is I literally dab my finger onto the kitchen towel and it should just come off quite easily. I mean, you could there, look, just like that. Can everyone see that? You could just soak your tea towel, but I've got quite a lot of tomato seeds here. This was from one. I think this was from a yellow submarine. And oh, no, it isn't. I, so I know what it is because I wrote on it. it. Oh yes, yellow submarine, that's good. Um, actually, there are loads of tomato seeds there. So this was from one tomato. Well, if I were to grow all of those, it'd probably be too many for us. I wouldn't have room for them with the other varieties. So I might actually just save some of them for next year. But anyway, that's how you would get your, get your seed off. So I'll just tuck that away now. Um, quite simple. Um, so I'm just going to talk about varieties as well. So um, tomatoes have become really, really fashionable. There's such a thing in the, in the gardening world. And there are loads of different varieties and I've been trying to discover them. So I've always had a favourite, which is called Black Cherry. And this is from a company called Vital Seeds. Um, they're a company in Devon, but they do really interesting varieties. They also do one called Green Zebra because tomatoes don't always have to be red. Green zebra is a big fat tomato and it's green, but it's really tasty. It's got a heritage variety. And then there's a new one I've discovered, which is called Barry's Crazy Cherry. And this is obviously a cherry tomato, but it's um, yellow and opal shaped and you get masses and masses of fruits on one little branch. The new ones, there's one called Shimmer, which sounds good. And there's one called Lucid Gem, which is a sort of vivid orange and red. And they just look really stunning. So I thought I'd just share that with you because it's quite fun to find different varieties. So anyway, I'm just gonna open the Lucid Gem and show you what we do. So we're gonna do a little grow along. Um, the main thing with tomatoes is they need warmth to germinate. So unlike those seed potatoes that will just stay in a, an unheated place, Tomatoes need warmth. And for those of you that sowed chilies last month, they also need warmth. They take a long time to germinate and you've got to give them the best start. So I'm gonna move this down so you can see what I'm doing. They're tiny, as I showed you just now. Can you see the two little ones there? So we're gonna sow these. Um, so this is Lucid Gem. Now, what you need is you need, I use these little quail pots because I'm all about biodegradable things. You don't have to, but the key for tomatoes is they should be sown in individual pots. Try not to sow them in a, I mean, you can, but try not to sow them in a seed tray. You could do it. You could use one of these. This is an old fruit punnet. It's got holes in the bottom. So if I were to sow in this, if I had lots of tomato seeds like those yellow submarine, I might be tempted just to sprinkle them in this, but I would put it on a little tray. These little trays are quite useful because they, they're the same size as a window ledge, so they don't get in the way. The cat is quite clever and knows to avoid them and sits between them. Um, and the tray obviously holds the water spills. So, I mean, I save all of these and use them. The other thing is to keep these, these um, containers because the lids are useful as well. So maybe we'll do both and you can see what I mean. So um, you need some compost and I only use multi-purpose compost. You can use seed compost for sowing tomatoes, but I find it's always too heavy. And tomatoes, this is a surprising fact, I think, they are expensive seeds to buy. And bearing in mind, they're very easy to, to save your own. Um, and they also germinate really, really well. So I don't really understand why they're so expensive, but it means you don't have to be too fussy over your compost. I've got some really nice sort of um, loose compost here. It's a bag of multi-purpose from my local garden centre, which is um, run by a 
a local family called Coolings. Um, they're based in Kent, if anyone lives in Kent, but they brought this one near me in Sussex. Anyway, I'm going to fill up my little pot and you don't need to put any drainage holes or worry about that because it's all a natural, natural fibre. They're made from coconut fibre. Um, so I'll just fill my pot. If anyone's joining along, fill your pot and then always give a tap to get air pockets out and give a little brush across the top. What you don't want to do when you're sowing seeds is you don't want any air pockets because it will stop your seed from germinating. And if you've gone to the bother of filling a little pot and being organized, you don't you want to have good germination. So a little bit of water, not too much, but a little bit, just to dampen the top. Um, and then I'm going to pick up my little seed here. So tiny, they just get caught. And I'm just going to pop it in the middle. Can everybody see that? And then I'm just going to push it down. It's not going to go down very far below. I'm just going to make a little push, just like that. So it's just about half a centimetre. It's a little hollow, it's so difficult to see. And then I'm just going to get a little bit more compost and cover it on top. Hardly any, I would call it a light dusting. So that is how you sow a tomato. Now, the other thing is that you could then put it in my favourite and it's so you look, this is quite easy. You can do a whole little row of them in here. See how many I can get in. Yes, look, so three I could fit in and then I could probably get another one here. So these are quite useful for saving. Or if you've got one of those old seed trays, you could actually position them in old seed trays. I mean, it's not bad to have plastic, just try and keep reusing it and don't throw away. So it's gonna sit in that thing, or you could put it on some of these trays. I've got some longer trays as well, but just some of, because when you water them, um, obviously they're gonna get a little bit damp at the base and so you don't want to ruin your, your um, windowsill or wherever you're putting them. So that's what you do. And they need to go somewhere, somewhere warm. So um, I would put mine, my kitchen is really warm, so we've got an Arga, so I, but I would still put these actually where the boiler lives in a constant, really quite intense heat boiler room, just because they need that oomph to kick start. And then once they've started um, and they produce little tiny seedling coming up, they're quite weedy little seedlings. That's when I would then move them still into the kitchen, but onto a window ledge when there's a bit more, a bit more air. So they're not quite as hot. Just, I just think they need that. It's a bit like if you've got a heat map, you put your tomatoes on a heat map. They just need that constant heat to begin with, okay? And once they've germinated, then they're easy, but they just need that initial heat. So that's, that's these will be going to my boiler. So I'll have to do my tomatoes in phases actually. So I did put heat mats on my Christmas list, but very sadly, they didn't turn up, kitchen scissors did instead. So I'm not really sure what happened there. I call it lack of communication in my household. <laughs> um, but anyway. The heat maps are still on my Christmas list. Um, so uh, if you've got heat maps, they're brilliant. If you've got a propagator, you can put them in a propagator. If you haven't got a boiler room like I have, which is actually the water room, but the boiler lives in it, um, these lids are good because they are actually your own propagator. So what you could do is you, so if I use that tray to put them in, you could just put the lid on and that is your homemade propagator. And these actually, I know that they don't fit properly because you might have two bottoms that you make one with a lid and one not. It doesn't actually matter. The fact is, is they're keeping in the moisture, they're keeping them warm and um, they won't dry out. And you can check every few days, bit of water, lid back on. As soon as your tomato germinates, then you remove the lids and that's it. And you leave them open to your, your kitchen elements in the air. But until then, keep the lids on. If you don't have any of these, because obviously I haven't given you much warning for these, um, you can actually use a plastic bag or you could use, um, I don't know why we seem to have a few pudding cups. You could even do that and use one of those each. It's, I guess you'd have to have quite a few, but if you're sowing maybe just five tomatoes, if you've not sown them before, you could do that. That's a really good little propagator. And if you don't have that, just use a plastic bag, a freezer bag, and just position the bag over the pot. It doesn't have to be clever. You can just balance it. I don't know if any of you, I always wash out my freezer bags and they're very difficult to dry, particularly in the winter. So I tend to wash them inside out 
and then I stick them on my wooden spoons to dry properly. So it's the same process. So you could just put your, you could put a little plant label in like this, and you could use that to tent your small freezer bag, if that makes sense. Um, so that is how you sow tomatoes. So individual pots. And this size is really good because you can leave your tomato in here until it's time to move on. And before you do that though, you must write a label because although I've said, I know I'm planting a lucid gem, I will be planting so many tomatoes and I can guarantee you, I will forget which one is which. I know I shouldn't, I know I should know, but I forget. So lollipop labels are brilliant, brilliant biodegradable plant labels. If you don't have these, it's absolutely fine to have plastic, but just make sure that every year you save your plastic labels and use something like um, nail polish remover to remove your indelible writing if you've used an indelible pen. But I like these that, you know, they last a season and then they get put in the compost heap or we burn them and they, there's something nice about them. I used to buy them from Poundland, but bearing in mind, I can't get to shops at the moment. You can buy them or, you know, loads of them from somewhere like Amazon. Amazon seems to be answering all our needs, which is slightly annoying, but they are convenient, aren't they? And they are quick. Um, anyway, so uh, yes, yeah, so that is first tomato of the season. So that's exciting, isn't it? And that will go into the house. Now with tomatoes, the other thing I was going to say is that um, they will need to be moved on at some point. So, so you let them germinate, you remove your lid, and you let them sit in the in the kitchen and then when the weather warms up but only when the weather warms up is when you can move them into the greenhouse if you have a heated greenhouse germinate them inside and then move them to your greenhouse but they need to be warm-ish okay so um what i would do is that you wait for um two so there are things called true leaves so the first leaves that come are just the first sort of baby seeding leaves but after that, you get true leaves. The same with chili peppers. The first pair of leaves that appear are not called true leaves. Your second pair that appear in the middle are the true leaves. So with a tomato, when you see your true leaves, so that's four leaves in total forming that you can see, and you've got a nice little size seedling. It's probably about four centimeters in height. Um, you could then, if you wanted to, you could then move it to a bigger pot so it's got room to grow. Now, I've got one here that I'm going to use for the cucumber. But when I say bigger pot, I mean from this to this. Now I know this is plastic, but I save everything from things I've had. So I wash them every year, everything's washed. And then I reuse just so that I'm not harboring any more pests and diseases. But I would put them into this because it's too complicated and not right to keep the seedling in here and to wait all that time until April when it gets planted out properly in its final growing place. So um, let them grow in here. When they're bigger, you then move them on to the next size pot and here they will stay until you're going to plant them either in your greenhouse, if that's where you're going to grow your tomatoes or outside. Now, if you're going to grow tomatoes outside, you would need to consider hardening them off, which means getting them used to the outside temperature in about April time when there's no frost maybe sometimes even May, you're gonna to have to check the weather forecast. Tomatoes are temperamental. I don't grow mine outside. I grow a few cherry tomatoes outside, but last year was exceptional because it was so, so hot, wasn't it? And we were all benefiting from those fruits that perhaps we've never had before. But who knows what this year is going to be like. And I want to eat a tomato in the summer. I don't want to wait until the end of August or September to eat a tomato and that's what I found by growing them all outside. So I always grow as many as I can inside and it's always been successful. So inside or outside, you still would need to move them on from this size to a bigger size. And then I know grow bags are sold for tomato growing and cucumber growing and aubergines, but, tomato, uh, but grow bags are very, very shallow. They're sort of about that, aren't they, all the way along. And a tomato, because you started it off so early, has actually a really deep, big root and it needs to go deeper so it can mature properly and produce lots of fruit. So I always recommend people to buy the grow bags, but open up the grow bag and tip out the soil, the compost, into big terracotta pots, really big pots. 
or big buckets or big pots if you've had big shrubs delivered from a garden centre or a nursery. Save all of those black plastic tubs. They're about a foot in diameter. They're great. Save those and use those because they've got the depth for the root of the tomato. And the other thing, when you're planting out your tomato, when it's ready in April, May, to its final position, you will need a stake. So you'll always need a bamboo kit cane. I'll just use this as an example. Um, so when you're planting it out, you've got, let's pretend that my plant label is the tomato and let's pretend it's really tall. You would need to replant it and then put a stake in a bamboo cane because your tomato is gonna to grow very tall because most tomatoes that we grow are these cordon ones which grow tall and it needs tying in, the stem needs tying into your stake. So whenever you plant your tomatoes to their final growing position, always put the stake in at the same time. If you do it later and you ram your stake in, you'll damage the root. It sort of makes sense, but it's easy to be in a hurry Oh, I've got to plant those tomatoes. They've been hanging around in those pots for about a week and oh dear, they're not looking good. You plant them in a hurry and you forget the stake. And then if you go back three weeks later, you've got a plant that should be like that. And it's sort of like that, there's a bit breaking off and you try and position it and tie it into a stake. You've damaged the root and you've probably broken a bit of the stem off by doing that. So always do a, do a marker at the same time. Um, and um, you don't have to put them in the greenhouse, they go to a polytunnel if you have a polytunnel. And you could risk them outside, some people have success, but as I said to you, it's the weather here in the UK, you just never know what it's going to do. Fingers crossed, it's another nice summer, but you just don't know. So mine stay in the greenhouse. When they're growing taller up their cane, when they get to the top of their canes or the top of your greenhouse, you need to cut off or snap off the main stem, the top of it. So say this is the stem, you literally snap off the top of it to stop it growing up because they can carry on growing forevermore. So you want it to be one straight stem and then you've got all these lovely trusses below. And as it's growing, so from this stage to this stage, you just watch it grow. You pot it on. And when they're growing from this stage, um, as the stem grows, you'll start to see little tiny green shoots appearing between the leaf and the stem. So in this little V, I'm do it that way, in that little V shape, in here, there's always a little shoot that comes out. You need to take it off. It's a new shoot. It looks like a new baby tomato. Remove it because it's called a side shoot and you don't want them taking off because what will happen is they basically grow like another tomato plant off your stem and they'll take away all the energy from your main stem with your lovely trusses of fruit. So remove them. And you have to do that regularly. They grow almost overnight. So you need to be on charge of that. Um, somebody did say to me that they've snapped off their tomato side shoots and they've popped them in a glass of water and they've rooted and they've grown them on as new plants. So you could try that if you wanted to. But if like me, you've saved tomato seeds, you've got, packets I'm not even going to show you all the other packets that I've been tempted with then I have got way too many that I can cope with so I certainly won't be making plants with my side shoes but it's just another thing that you can do um and um what else can I tell you about that the hardening off oh yes the watering so tomatoes are weirdly like creatures of habit they love being watered regularly so I water mine every single night I don't do it in the morning I do it in the evening and it works really well you should never let a tomato plant or the soil dry out. If you do that, you'll start getting cracked skins. Um, you could end up if making them sort of um, more vulnerable. If blight were to get in, all sorts of things could happen. So look after your tomato plants, water them regularly, treat them as if they're little pets, basically, um, and they should reward you. Um, it's bad luck if you get blight coming in, that's airborne, but there's nothing you can do about that. If that does happen, you'll have to destroy that plant before it spreads to anything else. Um, but other pests and diseases, if you water regularly and feed them with a tomato feed um, about every week, every two weeks in the summer, then they'll look after you and you're looking after them and it, you should have lots of nice tomatoes. So yeah, so that's, that's what I say. I mean, please don't be put off and please don't think you have to buy these little pots. I just love them because they don't dry out. Um, but you, you can easily just put them in here, but I think smaller pots are better. And um, 
this sort of biodegradable qua is good um, and so is plastic. Terracotta, I have a lot of these lovely old pots, but they're cold. I mean, just by feeling it now, I'm not gonna be giving my early seeds a good start if it's, if it's cold already. So, whereas this, it already feels warm in this room and this is still freezing cold. So that's why I don't use terracotta pots for these seedlings at this time of year.